All right, the object of this lesson is to understand chemical formulas. We're going to be doing some chemical equations in the next few chapters, so we're needing to understand what all these numbers mean in these chemical formulas that we're going to be looking at here. One thing I want to review before we begin is distributive property, which we learned in math. We're actually going to be using that in this lesson. So remember the distributive property, if we have this 2 outside of the parentheses, um, and you're multiplying that times the sum of 4 and 3, you can actually just distribute that 2 to both parts of that. So you could do 2 times 4 plus 2 times 3, which would be 8 plus 6, and then you get your answer of 14. As we do our chemical formulas, we're going to find that works the same way. So here we have H2O, which most of us know as water. The first word I want you to get to know is subscript. Subscript tells us how many of the particle before it uh, there are. So we'd have two parts hydrogen, only one part oxygen because that does not have a subscript. Um, so if it has a subscript of three, it'd be three parts and so on. Um, the next one would be coefficient. Here we still have our H2O with a two for subscript. The coefficient works just like this two in the distributed property. You distribute that two. Here we have a 2 again. We would distribute that 2 to the H2. Then we distribute that to the 1 O. So how many of each would we have in this case? We would have 2 times the 2 hydrogen. 2 times 2 is 4 hydrogen. And how many oxygen? 2 times 1. So we'd have 1, or sorry, 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 oxygen. And then we're going to follow this formula for the rest of these. We have acetic acid, which is vinegar. We have three subscripts this time. We have two for carbon, four for hydrogen, two for oxygen. And now we have a coefficient of three. But we can do the same thing. We can distribute that three to all three types here. So we'd have three times two. So we would have six carbon. We would have three times four. So we'd have 12 hydrogen. Then we're gonna have three times two for oxygen. So it's gonna be six oxygen. Let's try it for nitric acid now. We have four for a coefficient now, and we have only one substrate, and that's for oxygen. So nitrogen and hydrogen are all by themselves in this one. So we can multiply this four times everything. So four times one would be four hydrogen. Four times one would be four nitrogen. And now we have four times the three oxygen. That's gonna be 12 oxygen. One more thing to throw at you. When we're going to be working with a lot of reactants in our balancing chemical equations, we're going to need to know how many uh, total particles are going to be in the whole reactant because we have to balance that on the other side. So here we have 2 times C3H8, then we have the 3 coefficient times hydrogen, 2 parts hydrogen, 1 part oxygen, or water. So this is actually propane and water. And what we can do here is we can find the total for, like we, we see hydrogen's placed twice here. We have an H8 and then we have an H2 over here. We need to get the product over here of the two times the eight. We need to get the product of the three times the two. We need to add those two together since they're broken up by this pot, uh, plus sign here. So what we can do is we could find two times three for the carbon. That would give us six carbon. The two times the eight would be the 16, so 16 hydrogen. We're going to be adding this now to it. So we have 3 times 2, which would be 6 hydrogen. Then we have 3 times the 1, so that would be 3 oxygen. So now we just need to add the 16 hydrogen with the 6 hydrogen. That's going to give us 22. So now our final product is going to be 6 carbon, 22 hydrogen, and 3 oxygen.